from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. All American News brings you our people's contribution to America and freedom. Here in the council chambers of the Chicago City Hall, youth holds sway. Major Lennox Lohr, who conducted this session. These boys and girls are juniors and seniors from Chicago's public and parochial schools. There are 500 of these delegates at the meeting, representing 176,000 students. The organization known as the Youth Conference was formed last February, and since its beginning, juvenile delinquency in Chicago has been reduced by 15%. The conference also has greatly helped interracial relations. The National Tuberculosis Institute is now conducting its annual drive to raise funds for fighting the dread disease, which has long been an American plague. The money is used all year around in educational, preventive, and clinical work, which means employing visiting nurses, making x-rays, giving tests, and so on. Artist Spence Wildey designed this year's seal. Each seal bought for Christmas packages and mail will not only spread good cheer, but will help keep the terror of tuberculosis under control. A city block of Douglas Community Center provided this statue. Major Turpin of the U.S. Treasury Center is among the distinguished spectators at the unveiling. It's a 10-foot statue with illuminated torch and base. On it is inscribed the names of 74 boys and one girl from this block in service. I am deeply interested in the campaign to improve the good conduct of colored Americans. Any honest effort intelligently conceived and presented, calculated to further the progress of my people and to hold the tremendous gains that they have already secured captures my support and enlists my strength and energy. Little things in life count more than we sometimes know. Courtesy, cleanliness, thrift and refinement in all the ways of life are virtues. Loud talk, chips on the shoulders, vulgarity, untidiness, and lack of respect for others are important. The Better Conduct Campaign is a forward step in the right direction. Every red-blooded American should do his part. Self-improvement and better conduct will help us in winning job security, respect, consideration, and a host of friends. A big party was tendered Alexander King of New York upon his retirement and a citation for 52 years of faithful service. He was assistant postal delivery superintendent. Miss Penelope Johnson of Columbus, Ohio, about to give violin recitals in leading cities. Harrington, war correspondent, back from a year in Italy. He is one of America's foremost cartoonists. He was art editor of the People's Voice. He was wounded several times. Harrington gave glowing reports of the 92nd Division. Many 
Broadway bond buyers make their purchases in theaters. For instance, Roosevelt Wharton, a chauffeur, and his wife, Anna Wharton, a beautician, seen in a Washington, D.C. theater lobby. They have just bought a $1,000 bond, which is their tent. Proud investors in democracy and in a secure future. Richmond, Virginia is all out for the bond drive. Soldiers from Camp Lee and Camp Pickett are in the parade, which is now passing the reviewing stand at Lane and St. James Street, and certainly making a stirring sight. Among the marchers are innumerable return vets back from overseas service. Making a lovely appearance indeed with a wax in their smart uniform. Mayor Herbert, another well-known, witnessed the parade. In the Jeep, Lieutenant Wise, a war hero. Nurses from St. Philip's Hospital, another vital arm of the war effort. And of course, the Boy Scouts, sturdy citizens of tomorrow. The parade was miles in length, one of the finest ever staged in the city of Richmond. And school children who have done a great job, not only in buying bonds and stamps, but in selling them as well. In addition to high school bands and military bands and units of marchers, there were floats and everything else that goes to make a great patriotic turnout. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.